You might have heard of this site called Upwork in your search for online work or in my previous videos. Well, that's no surprise because Upwork is the largest freelance platform on the internet and in the world that connects clients to freelancers regardless of the level of expertise. In 2022 alone, freelancers on Upwork made a staggering 4.1 billion US dollars on the platform. Upwork offers incredible opportunities, not just of earning income online, but discovering your ideal client, connecting to a global marketplace, and also building your portfolio and online reputation. As an aspiring freelancer, using this platform will level up your understanding of the freelance industry. Hi, I am Daniel and welcome to my channel where I help entry-level freelancers earn online by teaching in-demand skills and also sharing knowledge about online freelance opportunities. In this video, I'm going to break down a few things you must understand to get you started on the right foot on Upwork. Understanding these basics will keep you from wasting time, money and damaging your reputation on this wonderful platform. So let's dive in. First things first, signing up. For Upwork. Go to Upwork.com, click the sign up button and then join as a freelancer. Fill in your details, name, email and so on. If you prefer, you can continue with your Apple ID or uh, your Google account and set up your account real fast. After signing up, you have to verify your email and identity with an ID, a government issued ID, so a national ID, passport, maybe driver's license. You are only eligible for one Upwork account in your lifetime. You have one shot at Upwork and you must make it count. Next is complete your profile. So after signing up, complete your profile, you, you upload a good welcoming headshot as your profile picture. Uh, make sure that uh, there are no filters and the background is clear. Here I have a shelf, but preferably your background should be clean. Then fill in your job title or your niche. The smaller the niche, the better. Specify a skill and an, an ideal client you would like to serve. For example, here I have short form video editor, but a niche would be like short form video editor for wellness podcast or short form video editor for sports YouTube channels or for sports podcasts. The more niche you can get, the better because that means you'll only be proposing to those particular jobs. So set your early rate. If you're a beginner, the thought is that you spend a long time doing a particular project. And if you're an expert, that the thought is that you spend a shorter time doing a particular project. And that's why you have a high hourly rate. So keep that in mind as you are setting your hourly rate. Write a compelling bio here, highlighting who you are, who you serve, and how you help them achieve their goal. What makes your service or what makes you different from the myriad of uh, people doing the same thing as you? What makes you different? It could be the way you communicate. It could be your sticking to deadlines, timeliness. It could, could have to do with service delivery or customer service or excellence of products, anything like that. What makes you unique from other people offering this service? The next thing you do is you search for work uh, on Upwork. You can use an advanced search here to help you narrow down what exactly you're looking for. This command tells it that I want my job posting to have the word drills or TikTok editor. Alternatively, you can use uh, all these words. So here you put all the words that you want your job posting to have, and that will bring for you the exact word or phrases that you have put in your search. So for example, here I have Instagram Reels editor for one minute video urgent price negotiable. This is a job post. Here there's a job description. Here you can see the payment method is verified though they do not have any ratings or reviews. They have hired but maybe the contract is still on. That's why it's still at zero. As you can see here it has one hire. They have posted two jobs, 50% 50, 50 hire rate. You can see the number of proposals. This client is seeing his or her job. Last viewed it 36 seconds ago. Even so she has sent out invites to 30 people to propose on this particular post and only one person has uh, proposed for her post. Invite sent 30, 29 unanswered because the job is recently posted, posted eight minutes ago. Let's look at another one, maybe the one where someone has higher rating on Upwork. This particular client has a five-star review from freelancers on Upwork. They're from the United Kingdom. 
uh, they have posted four jobs and they have 75% higher rate. That, that means out of the four jobs they have posted, they have, they have hired freelancers on three of those four jobs, giving them a higher rate of 75%. Here you can see they have 20 to 50 proposals. It was last viewed by client 30 minutes ago. Next is submitting proposals for jobs on Upwork. As a freelancer on the platform, you have to submit proposals for jobs which match your skill on your Upwork profile. And this will help you stand out as someone who specializes in that particular skill set. Here are some of the qualities of a good proposal. It has to have a strong hook or a strong introduction. You have to make sure the first two lines of your proposal are strong enough to make the client want to read on the rest of your proposal. Your first two sentences are the very first thing the client notices and reads before even opening the proposal. You must make sure that the proposal you're writing is customized and tailored to that particular job posting. Avoid generic and copy-pasted proposals as much as possible. Make sure that each proposal you make is different from the last one. Focus on the client and not on yourself. Focus on how you can solve the problem of the client. Use as few words as possible to communicate uh, the most meaning to your client while writing your proposal. Avoid lengthy wordy proposals but make sure your proposal is concise and gets to the point and hits uh, the client's pain points and interest. In order to propose for jobs on Upwork you have to buy connects. However, not all is negative in my opinion about having to buy connects on Upwork. Contrary to popular YouTube and internet belief on Upwork being expensive and unfair, I believe there are some overlooked benefits to this model of connects for beginners in particular. The first one is proposed quality control. The connect system helps to filter out casual or unserious freelancers, reducing the number of low quality proposals submitted. The second one is manageable application volume. Currently, most jobs from highly rated clients on Upwork receive between 15 to 50 proposals. If connects are free, this number would easily exceed 100 proposals per job posting. And this would really hinder serious, professional, and skilled freelance beginners from entering the platform. The third one is by reducing the overall number of applications, the Connect system increases visibility of proposals from committed and skilled professionals. The fourth one is it really reduces the overwhelm and overload of proposals that clients normally get on Upwork. By paying for Connects, the number of proposals and applicants per job posting drastically reduces. The last one is platform sustainability. Well, of course, Upwork has to take its cut and make money. I believe helps it pay for its employers and hopefully to make the platform better for serious freelancers and serious clients and make the whole experience better. So that is my argument for connects on Upwork. The number of connects required to submit proposals per job, they really vary. About 12 connects are required averagely to submit a proposal on a job. One thing to note, however, is that when you sign up for Upwork, you are given 50 free connects. Every month, Upwork gives freelancers 10 free connects. Another thing to note is that if you win an interview, that means if a client responds to your proposal, Upwork refund, refunds all the connects that ha you have spent on that particular job. What does it cost to buy a connect? 10 connects go for $1.5, and that is about uh, 5,500 or 5,000 to 6,000 Ugandan shillings. My recommended number of connects to spend per month is about 60 to 80 connects and 60 to 80 connects are between $9 and $12. That's about 35,000 Ugandan shillings and $12 is about 47,000 Ugandan shillings. You might be about to say that I do not afford 35,000 to 47,000 Ugandan shillings. But I implore you to ask yourself some of these questions on how you can make or save 35,000 to 47,000 Ugandan shillings per month. To break it down into biteable bits since the month has four weeks, how can you save 12,000 to 14,000 per week? So here are some guiding questions you can ask yourself and genuinely answer to afford connects. The first one is, can I spend less on food this week? Maybe it will mean dining out less, or maybe it could be cooking food at your home. The next question I'm going to ask is, where will I not go this week? So maybe there's a place you frequent, it could be to watch football, to hang out, 
to drink, go to the movies, from the cinema. Another question you can ask yourself is what will I not do this week to earn or save an extra 13k? You may choose not to watch Netflix or spend a lot of time on Instagram or spend a lot of time on TikTok and instead use that money uh, that you use for data or that time and invest it into uh, connects and spending more time on Upwork, getting to know what is actually required in your particular uh, skill set. So those are some of the questions you can ask yourself on how you can afford to buy connects on Upwork. There are many ways you can think about, really not limited to these particular ones. You have used your connects, you have proposed for work, and you have the client uh, respond to your proposal. Uh, what next? If the client responds to your proposal, that counts as an interview. If you get an interview, it's actually a win, even though you don't go ahead and get the job. All the connects you have spent proposing for that job will be refunded to you. And that is the beauty of learning how to write good proposals that actually convert into interviews. So the client has responded to your proposal and that is called an interview. Once that happens, you negotiate terms. If the client doesn't respond or you get the interview and you fail to go to the next step, you go back uh, on the horse. Don't wallow in your failure. Just go back and do the same process. But this time, make sure that you have learned something. Tweak your proposals to make sure that you increase your chances of getting interviews and also hired the next time. I'm going to assume that you have excelled at the interview, you negotiate terms. Once you have agreed terms, then the client has to fund the contract for you to start working. The client will pay up work and the money will remain in up work until you submit the work. And once you submit the work, the client has to approve it for the money to get released to your account on up work. If there is any misunderstanding, maybe the client wants revision, but you're confident that you have actually fulfilled your end of the bargain, you can raise a dispute on Upwork. Uh, Upwork has a fair policy of uh, dispute resolutions between freelancers and clients. From experience, I have never really exper experienced a dispute situation. I've never really had to raise a dispute on Upwork. But you want to avoid disputes as much as possible by actually under-promising, over-delivering, and that's basically how you avoid disputes and also get reviews and ratings, positive reviews and ratings on the platform. In case of any dispute, Upwork will mediate and find a way to solve it uh, amicably. Next is submit work for payment. What typically happens at this stage is the client is given five days to approve the work. If they don't respond within the five days, then the money automatically gets put onto your account on Upwork. If the client approves in less than one hour or in a few days, the money gets transferred to your account at that moment in time. Upwork charges 10% of every earning you earn on Upwork. And now let's talk about getting paid on Upwork. So Upwork has a few withdrawal methods. One is Payoneer. Payoneer charges one USD per withdrawal. I think Uganda supports Payoneer, but it is not the one I use, so I will not dwell so much into it. Another one is PayPal. PayPal, the last thing I had is not supported in Uganda. So I'm going to skip to the next one. Wire transfer from USD to local banks. Here, Apple could charge $50 per wire transfer to any bank uh, as long as it's not in the US. The payment method I use is direct US bank. There's this platform called WISE. It, is, it was formerly called TransferWISE, but now it's called WISE and it's accessible to everyone and what it does is when you sign up for that platform deposit some money that is 90,000 EGX this is a deposit you can you can withdraw it at any time you want it will give you a US bank account and a UK bank account a US bank account is a very important asset when you're doing work online because it will eliminate uh, almost all the charges when it comes to transferring money between your client and you here in Uganda or your client in the UK. So when you have received money on Upwork, you can transfer it to your WISE account using the US bank account that is provided by WISE. And from WISE, you can transfer that money to any bank in Uganda at very attractive forex rates. That is how Upwork works in a nutshell. I know this has been a lot. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will be sure to answer them. Any reservations you have about this platform called Upwork, please drop them in the comments and let the discussion continue. Otherwise, thank you for watching until the end. If you found value in this video, leave a like and also subscribe. Hit the bell icon so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you and until next time.